Let's spend a bit of time looking at the way in which we can use Socrative for revision, particularly focusing on this feature here, the quick question, so multiple choice, true, false, and short answer. In particular, we're gonna look at short answer and how that can be really useful, both for you as the teacher, also for the students in terms of the way in which they craft their responses to exam style questions. First of all, if we go over to reports up here, I'm going to show you what I've done in the past, so what one looks like, so you can get a feel for how this actually works. So if we go down to the second one here, which says explain the short-term effects of exercise on muscle temperature, and you can see I did this a little bit earlier on in the year, then if I click on that, it will bring up a certain amount of information for us. You can see here that it says show names. Those names are turned off for the moment. Show response, they're turned off and show results. Now, results, if I turn that on, I haven't actually marked them, so nothing shows there. But this is the bit I'm really interested in, show responses. And you can see initially that you get the first couple of words from a response. But if I click on a response, you can see that the question is there, which I've written in. I'll show you about that in a minute. But you can also see the student's response. Now, if I were to project that on the board, then all the students in the class can see this particular response. We can analyze it. We can look at what key terminology has been included. We can look at anything that's been missed out. We can look at examples if they're required. We can look at if points have been developed. We can look at how well the response uh, matches the number of marks available. So there are lo lots of different things that we can do by using Socrative that can help students to see what a response should look like. And I think perhaps the best reason for using Socrative like this and projecting responses on the board is because it's not that often that students see other students' work. They don't see the work of other people, their peers or their peers. And so they don't really know necessarily what other pieces of work look like. And we can scroll through, I'll just quickly do this. So you can see here in comparison to the first one we just looked at that this answer is quite minimal. Does it merit getting two marks? Probably not. How do you actually do it? So we're going to go to launch as we were at the beginning. We're going to go to short answer. Click on short answer. Would you like to stop the current activity? We always ask that. Yes. And then you can write in your question here. So you could quickly write that in. Or you can verbally explain the question or you can write it on the board, whichever way you want to do it. Do you want to give your students unlimited responses? You might want to, in which case you toggle that. Do you require their names? I ask for their names because then I can give bespoke individual feedback, obviously, to the student once they've done that. Uh, one activity, one attempt, yes, I think so, and then start. And so what we have, once that's generated, is the question I've written here, question here, that would be where your question is. Once your students start to write and then submit their response, they appear here. And when they're all in, we can show names, we can show the answers. And what we can do as well, and this is really useful if there's only two or three responses perhaps, is we can vote on what we think is the best response and then we can talk about why that choice has been made. So another thing that you could do perhaps is, you, depending on the size of your class, you could have three or four groups, perhaps of three or four individuals in each, with one device, they have to discuss together what they think the, the response should be, the perfect answer. Someone types in the, the response and then that group submits that answer so that we'd only have three or four answers, even though we've got a class of 15, 16, 20, or whatever it is. And that's a really nice way of getting everybody involved as well and voting and then and discussing what they think the best response is. So if you haven't got Socrative, it's completely free. Highly recommend that you use this. And there's lots of different ways as well beyond this that you can use it for revision, but this seemed to be a really good one just as we approach the exam season because students obviously have to craft their responses.